What's good, Crown family? Hope you're having a good day today. If not, I hope this video bring a little light to your day. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we finna check out when a gang leader confronted Mike Tyson. Let's go ahead and get straight into this. I ain't gonna hold you. Well, we here for the video, brother. This gonna be a fight, Tyson, and you know it. You hit me, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Welcome back to the Big Fight Recap here on BLTV Classic. He pulled his glasses off. Did you see his eye? Steve <laughs> Harvey. <laughs> on today's video, we revisit a young the Steve Harvey. fight saga between Mike Tyson and Mitch Blood Green. A genuine beef that 10 rounds of boxing couldn't squash, as the two would face off one more time on the street, this time in a much shorter affair with a decisive victor. <laughs> Let's get right to it. Closing with a flurry. The bell is going to sound. Jeez. After Tyson's 10 round decision to James Quick Tillis in 1986, the invincibility aura from Kid Dynamite took a slight knock as the two heavyweights battled out a much closer fight than the boxing fans and bookmakers expected. How disappointed are you that the knockout string is over? Not at all. If anything, I got, you know, I feel relieved and I'm confident if I wanted to, I couldn't have knocked them out. It was Tyson's first time Bro. going the distance as he had finished his oh previous 19 goodness. opponents all inside the opening two or three rounds. That gave some of the other heavyweight contenders an incentive to catch this teenage dynamo early, halt the hype train, and earn the highest possible payday outside of a championship fight. Tyson said, gonna give me a fight, I want Mike Tyson. Point blank. Michelle C. Tyson, he's a mo. I'm gonna knock him out. Knock Mitch him Blood Green was one of the first fighters to utilize the new age of digital camcorders to get his message out there to boxing fans. Now I'm gonna show you some feast your eyes on a real heavyweight. There was no social media in those days, but local news stations and televised sports networks such as HBO would air the clips during a broadcast to gauge the fans' reaction. Oh wow. So he kind of like sort of invented like the whole era of boxers getting on video and talking they talk, you know, to promote a fight. Man should have got a bag for that. Hold up now. <laughs> Especially if he started it. It's probably due to audio compression over time, but I can honestly say I have difficulty understanding what Mitch Green is saying. Two clear things with a muscle flexing and homophobic slurs, and bizarrely enough, as far as my research suggests, this was enough to land him a shot at the hottest prospect in world boxing. Growing up on the tough streets of Detroit, Mitch Green was a prominent player in 1970s New York game warfare. By the age of 17, he had witnessed his father lose his life in a bizarre Western-style quick-draw shootout, not long before being shot twice himself, fortunately escaping with non-fatal injuries. Green tried to escape gang life by joining the UBA boxing gym in New York, but by this time his ties to the street were too pronounced, as he was now hailed the king of New York street gangs by the NYPD for his role as gang leader in the Deadly Bloods crew. Things slowly started to change for Mitch as his reputation as a gang leader was exceeded by that of a talented amateur boxer, the muscular six foot five big man that was racking up copious tournament success, including several New York Golden Gloves. See, I wasn't sure if he was like like a nun boxer wanting to fight Tyson or if he had any previous history boxing him, but I could see now that he had previous history in boxing. Let's get it though. From the Bronx, New York, undefeated in five professional bouts with one draw. Green took to the professional ring in 1980 and quickly started racking up wins over journeymen and fringe contenders such as Jumbo Cummings. Jeez! Champion in waiting Trevor Burbank Man's got that the first power. man to beat Green in 1985, where Mitch made a good account of himself, only losing by majority decision. Both Tyson and Green were on the fringe of a world title shot, so regardless of the antics, the two were on a likely collision course. Okay, let's get it. The shot from Green just helped build more interest in the fight, which in turn certainly struck a chord with Tyson, who openly admitted to hating that ugly mother effort. And Mike Tyson traditionally no robe. No socks, he says it makes him feel like a warrior. Makes him feel like a gladiator. Tyson met Green for the first time in May 1986 at Madison Square Garden. It was Tyson's first match at a prestigious boxing day. Bro, just look at Tyson, bro. Like, there's no way in the world I'm getting in a ring with Mike Tyson. Well, not unless the bag is big, but listen. <laughs> that man looks like an apex predator, bro. Like, that man is 
beast. <laughs> There's no way, bro. It was also the first to be covered by a large television network. Yet, the occasion didn't change the traditional no robe, no socks attire. He was all business and had a personal vendetta to settle with the now not so confident looking Mitch Blood Green. And was so much a factor in the last fight that we showed you here on HBO that he didn't double up. He just was a little bit lazy, especially in the okay. late round. So we'll see what he does about that against Mitch Green. Always aggressive, right in front of his man. Okay, he definitely out in his zone. He throwing punches. Let's go. There's the left hook I was talking about. He did draw a warning from Luis Rivera. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, Green's in trouble. Jeez. Oh. Left hand by Tyson. Everyone has oh. a plan until they get their mouth. He knocks man's mouthpiece out his mouth. Holy moly. Tyson, bro. That's Tyson. That's <laughs> Tyson, man. Good left hand by Tyson. Everyone has a plan until they get their mouth guard punched Jeez. out of the ring in the first round. While Green had all the physical advantages, Tyson's supreme boxing skills and speed negated the gap in size and weight, backing up Green from the opening bell, slipping and countering, forcing the much bigger man into survival mode from the word go. Big right hand against Tillis. And Ooh. what a shot! Ooh. That is an awesome shot. Tyson punched oh out my gosh. again in the third, where after he started mocking his opponent for having a wide gulping mouth. Stalking him across the ring, landing fierce single power punches. He's still holding his own, though. Hey, hey. Jeez, bro. The fight became so routine by the closing stages, the crowd knew they were witnessing a foregone conclusion. Tyson himself appeared to have his mind elsewhere as he bizarrely kissed his trainer, Kevin Rooney, while he was trying to deliver him intricate strategies and details regarding the fight. <laughs> but to be able to stay in a ring for eight rounds with Mike Tyson, bro. Hey, man, listen, that's bro. Anybody get in a ring with Mike Tyson, bro, you, you got to respect him, bro, because that, hey, you see what type of <laughs> power Mike Tyson got, man. <laughs> Jabbering away 100 miles a minute. Mike Tyson leaned over and just kissed him. Tyson closed the show, trying to score the knockout, but Green's disinclination to engage allowed him to grab and clinch his way to safety, resulting in him losing nine out of ten of the rounds on every jet of sport. Jeez. But we knew deep inside that I was going to win this fight so easy because of his style. He's a dang tough opponent, and he took some fairly decent shots. But as you know, I won comfortably, and I didn't try for the knockout, and I used a great deal of discipline in there, not knocking him out. Tyson claimed he what? carried Green's 10 round distance. So he wasn't even trying to, to knock him out? And whether it was true or not, Green's personal pride was hurt, and he was willing to do whatever it took to restore a sliver of respect amongst his peers. Green retired from boxing after the Tyson loss and returned to the street to earn a living from selling drugs. Bro, the thing is, it's just like, bro, even losing to Mike Tyson, being able to not get knocked out, bro, like, that's bro. <laughs> I, I I don't look. I don't see that as a L in no type of way. Like, bro, it it take a, a lot of courage to get it. But I, I, this was when Mike Tyson. I guess he first started. So Mike Tyson didn't really have the name that he does now. So I I, I, I guess I can understand. You know, he always planned to one day get Tyson back in the ring. But as his years of inactivity ensued, Tyson progressed to one of the most dominant heavyweight champions of all time, undefeated and undisputed. The days of fighting lingering contenders such as Mitch Green were over. It wasn't until a couple of years after their fight. But oh boy, like I said, he definitely still held his own, man. Like he was throwing them punches, bro. It's just like, but it, Mike Tyson, you know, he, he's a skilled fighter, bro. Skill. The two would meet again, this time in Green's element, the street. In the early hours of August 23rd, 1988, Mitch Green got wind that Tyson was shopping at a local clothing store close by to where he ran things on the street. Tyson had traveled a fair distance to pick up a luxury leather jacket handmade by one of his friends over at Dapper Dan's. As Tyson was chilling in the store with his entourage, Mitch Green burst through the door on his own, high on angel dust, demanding Tyson either give him a rematch or empty his pockets right there on the spot. Oh wow. Tyson, of course, no stranger to altercations on the street, dragged Mitch Green outside and pummeled him to the ground multiple times. Spectators said that the fight was short, violent, and very one-sided. In fact, it was no longer than 15 to 20 seconds, but that's more than long enough for the heavyweight oh, wow. champion to inflict severe damage. There is no footage of the fight, regardless of the clickbait you see on YouTube, but there were many accounts of what happened that all aligned, all except Green's account, where he claimed Tyson sucker punched him and ran. Who threw the first punch here? 
He did. He sucker punched me because he's with his friends, you know. And um, when he hit me, and I said, I couldn't get a chance to get to him like I wanted because everybody was like, me, you know, holding me, like, so he could get away from me. And so he get away. And he, like, he, was, he ran from me. Green was certain the Tyson scuffle, which became mainstream news around the world, would add enough public intrigue to get his rival back in the ring. That's actually smart. That's actually smart. I mean, I'm not sure if it worked, but uh, that's smart. But Mitch had already burnt his bridges among the promoters in the sport, with his violent threats to Don King in the past already shadow banning him from ever earning any serious money in the ring. Oh, well. After Green's failed attempts to get the rematch with Tyson, he filed a civil lawsuit for $20 million due to the injuries he suffered during their fight. The former gang leader came away with one small W to coincide with a long list of L's, winning the case and being awarded $45,000, oh, close wow. to what his purse was during their professional fight in 1986. Yeah, I remember seeing Mitch Green's eye after that. It was like, he broke his socket. Broke oh, the eye happened? socket, yeah. He broke his eye socket. Yeah. Jeez, man. Eye socket. You gotta hit really hard to do some Like, like facts, bro. Green returned to the Mike ring Tyson. seven years later, but at that point, he was a shell of his former self and was beaten by journeyman with losing records until he hung him up for good in 2005. As of 2022, Green is still a large as life character, but now employs his energy into his love of Christianity. He still has a gripe with Tyson, That's dope. but I think it's fair to say the two have now moved on, and whenever the topic is brought up today, they both make light of their infamous 30 year feud. That didn't work. The boy's scared of death. That dude had the street fight. The boy's scared of death. But well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't, didn't y'all have a street fight, man? I was for the ring, for in front of the street. Thinking the man would do somebody. He wouldn't do nothing. Oh, man, what? he freaked me out. Did you know that actually Tyson and Sal are good friends and he comes to the show? He knew. Look, look, look. Oh, there it is. Look, Tyson. There's no way. There's no way Tyson is actually there, bro. Holy moly, man. Imagine. I, I can only imagine the conversation like they had back then. Like after the show, man. Like, I'm pretty sure they probably squashed it and everything, man. But it, imagine telling a story of being in the ring with Mike Tyson, though. That's a legendary story. Like, I don't care, bro. Like, even if you, you lose, bro, you still, you fought the Mike Tyson. <laughs> One of the greatest boxers of all time, bro. That's wild, though. That is so freaking wild, man. <laughs> Mike Tyson actually pulled up to the freaking thing, bro. <laughs> Yo, this is good. This is really good. Well put together, man. Shout out to BLT, L, BLTV Classic. I'm going to leave the original video link in the description. I got to show him some love, man. He deserve all the love for this, man. It's, it's, it's put together so well and told the story so well, bro. It had a really good ending too, man. That, that was a wild. I was not expecting that ending, bro. But hey, man, y'all let me know in the comments what other reaction videos y'all want to see me react. Cause I, I still like, like, I want to go back and watch like a lot of like different, you know, legends in in, in, in the sports, you know, industry, bro. Y'all let me know. Appreciate y'all watching. Until next time, deuces. Also, I'm gonna throw a video on my face if you want to check that out. Y'all gotta show us some love by clicking the video on my face.